Hey guys, um, I'm back again. Um, I've been busy doing some acting work, uh, so that's been fun, but uh, that's why I haven't been making too many videos recently. Um, but I thought today, uh, I'm, well, I'm staying at my sister's house in Devonport. Hence the different uh, room I'm in, and um, I thought I'd show you a book I bought at a second-hand bookshop, and also thought I'd play you some tunes on the guitar. Um, so, I hope everyone has been well and keeping relaxed and chilled. Um, okay, so this book is really interesting. And what struck me at first was the cover. It's real, um, sort of psychedelic. And it's, uh, hardback and take the dust jacket off it's um got that old uh, style um, cover and golden print on the spine and it's called the other Hollywood and um, what it's about is sort of the people that lived in Hollywood in the golden age that weren't part of the film industry and so yeah the other the other people that lived there and worked there um, which I found quite interesting because you only really think about the movie stars and um, film productions and crew there. So, um, but it talks a lot about that as well. I've read about <clears throat> maybe a quarter of it so far. Um, but yeah, it's also, it's actually written in the 70s, I believe the, um, the publication page has been ripped out, so I don't know when exactly it was published, but I think it's um, somewhere in the 70s from what I'm reading. Um, and it's by Edward Thorpe, who I think is, um, he studied at RADA, I think he is an actor. Just go through and read a bit from it. So chapter one is called Historical Hollywood. In line with American American tradition, Hollywood was a boom town, developing at an extraordinary rate over two or three decades then declining almost as rapidly. It isn't, of course, a separate town by itself, but part of Greater Los Angeles, a monstrous urban sprawl, which by the 1980s will have become a vast megalopolis, stretching over 200 miles from Santa Barbara in the north to San Diego in the south, and with the aid of huge new hydraulical system biting deeply into the moche of desert. Hollywood, as tens of thousands will have known it, will hardly be discernible. Despite the title of this book, and my intention not to concentrate on the subject of the film industry, it is impossible to ignore it. 
Hollywood grew up because of the movies, and its very name, even today, is synonymous with films and filming. Few people can be very interested in knowing what was or wasn't there when the Span old Spanish missions came up the coast from Mexico around 1545, pioneering the Camino Real or Royal Road to San Francisco. Everyone only thinks of Hollywood as it was pioneered by such men as D.W. Griffith and Sam Goldwyn, and rightly so. Just have a look through to the next chapter. Hollywood. Most of the world's great cities have one or more famous landmarks with which they establish their character and by which they are recognized by people who have never visited them. It may not always be individual buildings like the Houses of Parliament, the Eiffel Tower, St. Peter's or the Acropolis, but whole vistas like the Champs-Élysées, the Grand Canal, the New York skyline, the Golden Horn. Sometimes it is just a geographical feature. Sugarloaf Mountain, Table Mountain, Oakland Bay, Sydney Harbour, Sydney Harbour that is dominant and upon which the city builds its individuality, its romance or its mystery. Even the neon palaces of Las Vegas gain from being in the middle of the desert. Hollywood has nothing, or rather, nothing it has bothered to exploit. It is quite nebulous, strangely without atmosphere, without one natural or man-made feature serving as a focal point with which to characterize the locality. Um, I kind of disagree with that because I don't know about you guys, but I always think of the Hollywood sign as the sort of landmark but he's obviously um, doesn't see that or has looked past that um, some pictures in here too showing um, the old Buildings in Hollywood. I think that one's still there. I think both of them might be actually. Talks about Chateau Marmont here. A notable staging post for visiting stars and celebrities. Stone fireplaces, dark oak furniture, heavy hangings, and an elevator vestibule faced with artificially corroded mirrors all combined to achieve the atmosphere of some set left over from an early Doug Douglas Fairbanks costume drama. Never been there before, but I don't know what it's like today. Uh, on the left, modern monolith building, and then on the right, Capitol Records. I actually didn't realize this, but the Capitol Records building was built in the 60s, and it actually looks a lot more modern than I would expect it. Hey, 
has been Hollywood. The pavements of Hollywood Boulevard are inset with pink stone stars, edged with brass and bearing the names of the most famous actors, directors, producers and technicians of the movie industry. It is only when you have walked a couple of hundred yards that you realise that 50% or more of the people they commemorate are either dead or forgotten. It's an axiomatic, of course, that as soon as you start inscribing the names of the quick, they quickly become the dead. Monuments to the living are probably the cruelest way of emphasising the impermanence of life and the movie industry is just about the most impermanent aspect of it there is. So many Hollywood after dinner conversations, so many Hollywood after dinner conversations decline into whatever happened to dot dot dot. So that's kind of true. Some more pictures here. Sunset Strip. The top is um, looking east and the bottom looking west in the 60s, I think. Yeah. Crazy how much has changed. I mean, there's this, this house here um, is, I was reading about this house and um, apparently it was one of the few, the only houses left on Hollywood Boulevard when they transformed it into sort of what it is now. And the owner rented out the front driveway as an auto park and apparently she didn't want to give up her house um, but it's such a great house it has um, got that real gothic look but I guess it's gone now but it would be so cool to if it was still there school Hollywood. To be a school child in Hollywood is to be in the centre of contemporary juvenile descent. On the campuses of colleges throughout America, there are to be sure fierce, often bloody battles being waged to hammer out some system that suits the 70s. But in Columbia and Berkeley there is, despite the MACE and the trenches, the broken bottles and the broken heads, an intellectual impetus that occasionally produces some reform or realignment which young people feel represents a victory for their generation. Talking to teenagers in Hollywood, I was unable to discover any coherent thought or movement, mood or idea that could be considered a positive contribution to social progress. There is only an endless reiteration that they want freedom, which usually means freedom to behave in a way that takes no account of the well-being of others. That is, freedom to play pop music in public places, freedom to race motorcycles and sports cars down the main street, freedom to take what they want when they want it. Yeah, I guess that was the 70s. Happy Hollywood. A year or two ago, it was quite common after dinner for your host to suggest a drive along Sunset Strip. Not as you might suppose to do a little window shopping from the car or to look down from the heights of Hollywood at the lights of Los Angeles, 
spread as far as the horizon. No, the object was to peer at the hippies who thronged the mile or so between Highland Avenue and La Cienega Boulevard. And indeed, it did resemble something of a costume parade or a Mardi Gras. Red Indian Braves, Wild West Cowboys, Davy Crockett's, Gene Harlow's, Al Capone's, Confederate soldiers, Indian gurus, esoteric Buddhists, Confucians, Castros, coins and drags, and just plain weirdies. They sat, strolled, sprawled, shouted slogans, proffered flowers, bestowed beads, and generally made the scene both for themselves and for the cavalcade of cars, the occupants of which happily exclaimed in outrage at the disgrace of it all. It may as well be at this point to try and define the hippie, at least in general terms. The, hook, the hippie took over where the beatnik left off. The beatniks were intellectual bums, wanderers dissatisfied with the grey flannel executive role, with uptight middle class suburbia, with the concept of planned obsolescence. If they were anachronistic romantics at odds with the automotive society, they were also the logical development of the rebels without causes of the 50s. For the beatniks found something to rebel against, the whole American dream, the worship of the dollar and of status symbols. I'm just gonna go through a bit. So this is the last chapter of it. Hopeful Hollywood. Go West, young man, has been the time-honored injunction to modern American youth and the lure and promise of gold in California, whether it be in the basic mineral form, in minted money, or just plain perennial sunshine has, for over a century, brought the young men and women of the country on their restless quest for fame and fortune. The goal may have been gold or oil or fruit farming or films, according to the period, but the influx was continuous and is maintained at the rate of around half a million a year. Today, the attraction is more likely to be the opportunities offered by the electronic and aerospace industries, but the magnet of money pulls just as strongly as it ever did. Of the many inducements that California offers to the latter-day pioneer, the prospect of being discovered in Hollywood still remains astonish astonishingly strong. Despite the discouraging truth embodied in so many stories, many of them produced by Hollywood itself in its perpetually reoccurring moods of self-scrutiny and self-criticism, the fables and fantasies, laws and legend of Hollywood constantly infuse the imagination of the young with dreams of success. So it is quite um, interesting, but very dated, which kind of makes it more interesting, I guess, to see it from this person's point of view at this time and see how much has changed now. So now I'm going to have a little play on the guitar. I was just playing around before with uh, a few songs using the same chords. Love. 
and I hope uh, you are nice and relaxed now and I will see you again soon.